Hi guys, welcome back to Data Every Day. Uh, today we're looking at a data set of uh, Walmart data. Uh, so it's each record is a week at Walmart. Um, and we get the weekly sales for the week. And um, we have this flag, holiday flag, which denotes if it's a holiday or not. And we're just going to run a simple um, notebook that's going to uh, try to predict whether or not we have a holiday based on these other um, other uh, features. So let's get into it. So um, we have uh, the task for today, given data about weekly Walmart sales. Let's try to predict whether a given record will be from during a holiday. And we're going to use three models, logistic regression, support vector machine, and decision tree to make our predictions. Uh, so here I have all the libraries we'll use today, NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, uh, Seaborn, and then for pre-processing, standard scalar, train test, split function. And then here's our three classifiers. So uh, let's go ahead and load in the data using pandas.readcsv. And we can get the uh, data right over here. Uh, the, this is the file path we paste it in. Check it out. And it's a very simple data set. We have a decent number of examples, but only eight columns. And uh, we're going to start by getting some info on the data. So right away, what I noticed about this is that there are no null values in this data set. We have 6,435 examples, and there are that many non-nulls in every single column. Uh, so the first thing I want to do in terms of uh, working, like process pre-processing, is uh, let's take this date column and turn it into new, two new features. Uh, year and month. So I'll say uh, feature engineering year and month. And we're just going to take the, the uh, date column, uh, which looks like this, right? And we want to apply a lambda function to it that takes in some x, which will, x will be one of these dates. And we're going to return just the last four characters of x which will be the year. So if we look at what this looks like, you see it's just the years of date. And what I'm going to do is make a new column now and call it year. That's what's going to be the years. Similarly, we'll have a, another one called month. But month, instead of being the last four, is going to be uh, these middle, middle two characters, which have index uh, 3 to 5. So if I after I, I create these new columns, and I can show you what this one looks like, just the months, we can drop the original date column afterwards, and so it is no longer of use to us. So I'll run that, take another look at data, and now we have these two new uh, year and month columns, and date is gone. So uh, let's visualize the correlations. So uh, visualizing correlations between the columns. Alright, so I'll create uh, the correlations matrix, which we can get from data.core, uh, just as a pandas function that returns the correlations between the uh, columns. And because they're all uh, numerical, I can just get the correlations uh, without having to worry about data types. So let's create a new uh, pyplot figure with a fig size of 12 by 10. Whoops. 12 by 10. And then I'm going to use Seaborn to plot a heat map of the correlations. I'm going to turn on annotations so we can see the correlation values and also set the minimum correlation to negative 1. And I'll include a nice color map, Mako. Then we can show it and fix. Oh, sorry. Equals should be here. And you can see the correlations here. Um, so anything that's uh, this color blue is not very he heavily correlated. Dark uh, colors correspond to strong negative correlations, and light colors correspond to strong positive correlations. And it doesn't look like we have uh, many correlations here at all. What's most interesting to me is that store and unemployment have the strongest correlation. But store is not even um, a real numerical column. It's, it's actually a nominal column because uh, this this is a unique store ID and there's no um, 
like the higher the number of store doesn't like mean something. You know, these are all unique. They don't have an ordering. So it's interesting to see that just by it just happens that the higher the number of store, the higher the unemployment. Uh, so w uh, we're going to deal with the store column. Uh, so encoding store column. And because it's a nominal column, I'm going to create, um, I'm going to one-hot encode it. So we're going to make a one-hot encoding function that takes an, a data frame, a column, and a prefix. And um, we're going to start by creating a copy of our data frame. And then we're going to create the dummies matrix, which is a, uh, it's just going to be pandas.getDummies of df sub column. And we'll include the prefix. So this, this uh, function here, I want to look at what that does. If we were to use this on the store column with uh, no prefix, it will take each unique store ID and create a new column for it, and then it will one-hot encode uh, the, the values so that you can see all, all these were store one, so we have ones in the one column and zeros in all the others. And at the end, we had store 45, so we have ones in the 45 column and zeros in all the others. So we can include a prefix as well that will just put store at the beginning of every column name. So down here, what I'm gonna do is just make this this function that allows us to specify the column and prefix we want to create dummies for. Then we're going to actually uh, concatenate using pandas.concat the original data frame and the dummies that we created next to each other. When we're done with that, we can uh, drop the original column from which we created the dummies. All right, and then we can return the data frame. That's our function. Now we'll have, all we have to do is say data equals one hot encode data store, and we'll give it a prefix store. I'll just say, uh, I'll put these here so you, it's easier to see. So column equals store, prefix equals store. And if I run that and then take a look, we now have 53 columns. Each uh, one is a new store number. And we have, we have dropped the original store column. All right, so now we can uh, split and scale the data. So I'm gonna split it into X and Y. Y is what we're trying to predict. So that's gonna be holiday flag. And we're gonna make a copy of it. And then X is going to be everything except holiday flag. So we're dropping it from axis one, and then we're gonna make a copy of that as well. Now we'll create a new scalar. This is a standard scalar from sklearn. And uh, this will basically take each column and give it, uh, give the column mean zero and variance one. So this will give our um, each column a very similar range of values that it takes on. So we're going to call fit transform to fit the scalar to x and then transform x so that we have mean zero and unit variance in each column. Now I am splitting uh, the x and y into trained and test sets using the train test split function from sklearn. Pass in x, y, and we'll specify a train size of 70%. All right, then we can model and train. Uh, so we're gonna create three models, like I said before. A uh, logistic regression model, which I'll call log model. And that'll be logistic regression. Um, and a support vector machine model, which I'll call SVM model. And that will be a support vector classifier, SVC. And decision tree model, which I'm calling DEC, which is a decision tree classifier. All right, and we're going to define those, and we're going to train them. So log SVM DEC, uh, log model uh, equals no no dot fit x train sorry x train y train. And I'll just print out models trained, and they have trained, and now we can get the results. 
So I'll print out uh, the, I'll do it like this. Uh, model dot score x test y test so I'm just going to copy this three times and then here I'm going to write uh, logistic regression accuracy and this is the log model this one is support vector machine accuracy this is the SVM model and decision tree accuracy and this is the DEC model that should be in there all right and I'll just uh, indent these a little bit so we get them all lined up and we'll see what we got all right so uh, very similar um, the logistic regression and support vector machine are performing uh, very similar. In fact, they have exactly the same accuracy. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they classified all the same uh, examples in the test set uh, the same way. And Decision Tree actually is performing slightly better here. Now, I haven't tweaked any of the hyperparameters in the models, but uh, this is sort of just giving an idea of, uh, with the default hyperparameters, how they compare. So I, this is a quick one. I'm just trying to keep this one short and simple. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and uh, leave any comments in the section below. So uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a fantastic day.